So you hear this quote a lot, and I've heard it a few times when I tell people this story, and I've always wondered, was it the experience that made us stronger, or was it something else? On September 4th, 2010, I woke to a 7.1 magnitude earthquake. It sounded like a train was outside my window, and it tossed me back and forth as I tried to move across my bedroom. After dodging a lamp, a dresser, and a few other objects, I learned that I had pretty decent reaction time at 4.30 a.m. And I also learned that earthquakes really suck. The quake was located 18 miles outside the city, and the energy released was equivalent to 670,000 tons of explosives. A lesser known fact is, that, is liquefaction. Basically, liquefaction happens when the land compresses down, the groundwater comes up, and it makes the land unstable and weak. So as soon as the shaking stopped, 54,000 tons of liquefaction seeped out of the ground around the city and caused a lot of damage. The total damage was over $2 billion. But surprisingly, the death toll was zero. Everyone felt very lucky. We thought he, we had the worst of it was over, but unfortunately it wasn't. In the first 24 hours, we had 128 aftershocks. 36 of those were over magnitude 4.0. Now anything larger than a four, there we go. Anything larger than a four, I think it helped me find religion because my first words usually started with holy this or holy that, and there may have been a God something tossed in there on occasion. <laughs> the aftershocks continued. By September, we had over 2,300. Uh, by Christmas, over 3,800. Sometimes you could hear them coming like a train in the distance. You had little shakes that you could barely feel to larger ones that sent people running for exits or diving under tables. Every quake made you pause and think, is this the start of something bigger or is it this it? As a precaution for months, I carried a backpack with me everywhere I went with supplies and my passport. Eventually, I became numb to the aftershocks. By Christmas, I just stopped carrying it because I wasn't noticing them as much, focused on work. See, my business partner and I owned a gelato company, and we were producing and distributing around the city. We were having a busy summer, and we just consumed ourselves with work in an effort to ignore what was happening. After a few months and many aftershocks, on February 22nd, I was in my kitchen when I felt the start of yet another aftershock. Unfortunately, this one felt different. It felt like there was a bus driving through my house. Within seconds, everything in the cabinets flung onto the floor, and I was tossed around like a doll. I bounced off a few counters, and I fell several times. And as I sat on the floor one time, I looked up to see my refrigerator coming at me like a giant weeble toy that was wobbling, but luckily didn't fall down. I jumped to my feet, pushed the fridge out of the way, and made my best effort to run to a door. But unable to grab this moving door handle, all I could do was jump into a corner and wait till the ride ended. Once outside, I first listened to my mom's advice. I checked to see I was willing, wearing clean underwear. <laughs> Proudly, I was. So I ran back into the house, packed the essentials, tossed everything into the car, and over the next four to five hours, helped whomever I could. I couldn't possibly tell you everything that happened that day in this short time, but it was intense, and I would kind of describe it as organized chaos. This was a 6.3 magnitude quake on a new fault line that was only two miles from the city. This time, 185 people died, and the worst was in this building five blocks from my house. The six-story building collapsed, killing 115 people. Around the city, thousands were injured, and hundreds were serious traumas. Military and police cordons were set up, and we were in a state of emergency for over 10 weeks. Total damage, over $30 billion and 80% of the CBD buildings were destroyed. Now, I'm sure many of you remember the gas explosion here in Bozeman and the damage to that block. That's what most of the city center looked like. On top of that, 320,000 tons of liquefaction came up through the ground, destroying entire suburbs. We had 190 aftershocks on that one day. I lost my sense of security, a city that I absolutely loved, and my livelihood on that Tuesday. We lost our retail space and lost all but one wholesale customer. 
So obviously I had a huge impact on my life, and after several weeks of living in what I can only describe as a combination war zone slash construction zone, I made a very hard decision to head back to the States. In April, I sold almost everything I owned, flew to a friend's house, bought a car, and drove to Bozeman. I arrived in May with a couple boxes and a few suitcases. I knew Bozeman was a good place for me because the car I bought was a Subaru, so I fit right in. <laughs> it was only after I left that I had the full extent of the experience register for months. I jumped at every little noise. I looked for escape routes and buildings I was in, and I had these images constantly popping up in my head. I spent time working through post-traumatic stress, depression, survivor's guilt, anger, and feeling of like abandoning the city and the people. It took over two years before I realized the feelings may have eased, but they still remained. So last year I went to counseling and, and did EMDR work, and this had a huge impact on my life. And I think that's what leads me back to my original thought, uh, the quote, um, if it implies a something I think, well, I think it implies if something doesn't kill you, it makes you better. And I can safely say that it doesn't. It changed me for sure. It added to my crazy, definitely. But what makes you stronger is how you deal with the experience. I think it takes a lot of energy and it can create considerable weakness at first. Preparing for this talk tested me and it weakened me at times, but it was well worth it and it was like free therapy, so it was, it was worth doing. You can't change what happened, but you can change the way it makes you feel. And I think a good start might be to improve your view any way that you can. Thank you.